Hey, this is Colin Dean with Think Computers. I'm going to show you around the QNAP 401. This is the QOS 401 on the TS469L. Um, this was only recently released, I think, in the past uh, oh, less than less than the past month. A release date up here is a little bit out of frame. Is uh, 2013-0604. So we're running about. Uh, I'll do some quick math. About two weeks ago it was released, so uh, let's give it a good shot as a part of our TS469L review. Pre-filled my password just so I didn't have to type it. So I'll click through these real quick just to kind of give you a feel for what QNAP is presenting as um, the major major part of this release. 4.0 came out a little a little bit further ago, I think it was about uh, a month ago, um, but um, 401 was a quick re quick fix release for a couple of the problems that, that came up. Um, the, big, the, the, the biggest difference in uh, QTS 4.0 is um, it, really it is complete, it's a complete overhaul of the, of the entire system. Um, it, it had been just this kind of frame-ish web app that um, felt really old. It hadn't been overhauled since probably about 2007, 2008, somewhere in there. Now we get a we get a much better look, much more um, web app feel, or, or or like a real application, almost like a system application. This is something I would almost expect to be shipped inside a uh, an actual browser product, uh, maybe a you know a wrapper around a web browser. Um, Go through here, and this is saying how you can e more easily connect to the NAS um, with some some screenshots in there. Uh, photo station is a quick way to to deal with photos. Music station is you know, more or less a glorified iTunes um, in a web browser. Um, they've really spent a lot of time working on. Um, Kind of making this device and and the other similar devices to be this kind of uh, home theater center where not only can you do like music and pictures, um, but you can also do video. Now these the video features existed in QNAP devices for the longest time, um, but the TS four sixty nine takes it one step extra, and you can actually plug in through HDMI and be able to control directly what's being played on your TV through your phone or even through a remote that's included with the device. Um, they're still using Twonky Media Player. I'd, I'd personally like to see them using um, uh, PMS or um, one of the other servers, but um, hey, Twonky works well for most people. Um, one of the big things they added was this MyQNAP Cloud. Um, it's kind of like uh, you know, your own Dropbox or your own Box.net. Um, that is specifically built into um, all QNAP devices now. Um, you know why? Why pay Dropbox or why store your files on somebody else's system where you know, um, corporations or governments can get in and see your stuff um, with you know, a request from a judge or something um, when you can have it on your own stuff and it's a little bit harder for you, for people to get to it. File synchronization can work across multiple devices. You know, QSync is uh, one of the main apps that works on your phone, um, as, as well as um, you know, uh, QNAP devices have had a remote sync, uh, remote replication for years. Lots of services you can install as well. I'm not going to show that next time. Uh, the first thing that I want to show you guys is uh, a quick overview of the control panel. You can see it pop out here. A lot of the stuff here is still kind of the, the same general categorization. The, 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 the sections are the, the same as the previous version of the software, um, but it's, it looks a whole lot better. Um, you can see the system administration stuff, time settings, so on and so forth. I'm not going to talk through all of these. I'll click through all of them, and then maybe if you see something you want to see a little bit more, you can just pause the video. Uh, you can see that I have four of the Western Digital Red one terabyte drives installed. They're specifically designed for NAS devices. Configured in a RAID 5. 
Smart's looking good on all of the discs. Don't have encrypted file system on this, um, although there's something about uh, about how the password works that I'd like to try. Uh, maybe I'll do that as a part of the later part of the review. iSCSI, if you want to use that as well as virtual disk, lots of network settings. I have these currently set up to be two separate interfaces. You know, there's there's of course two two NICs in the card. Uh, two NICs in the, in the device. Um, I usually set up for um, load balancing. Uh, bond, I think bonded load balancing is what it's called on my TS-809. Um, <clears throat> I just haven't set that up here yet. You can plug in a Wi-Fi adapter if you want, and of course they support IPv6. And of course dynamic DNS. You can configure various security settings. SSL is the big thing to, to configure here if you want to have your own SSL and not just a um, very basic uh, self-signed cert that includes out of the box. Hardware controls. Power controls. Notifications. I have this set up on, on my TS-809 so that I get notifications primarily whenever my backups fail. Um, but it also is really cool to use as a power um, you know, power status. I have my device plugged in, my TS-809 plugged into a um, cyber power NAS, or I'm sorry, not, not, not NAS, UPS. And uh, whenever my power goes out, of course, the NAS detects that the power is out because of the USB connection from the UPS. And then I get a nice email uh, because my entire um, network infrastructure is on is on a UPS. So well, my power can be out and I can still be able to access the internet and whatnot. Um, and if I'm not home, then I know that the power's been out and I know that, oh crap, I get to start worrying about resetting all my clocks and stuff. Firmware update, it's really cool because it'll automatically check or you can do it yourself. Backup settings and such. They rely on you to back up your own data if you ever want to do that, but you know you can use this to back up the settings. External devices, we get into external storage, USB printers and UPS. I don't have anything plugged in, so you're not gonna be able to see it. System status pops up in its own separate tab. And I'll full screen it here just so you can see it a little better. You can see that I've had it up and running for a couple of days. Get some traffic going to it. I don't have a lot of the services turned on, just the things that I enabled out of the box. See the graph refreshing a little bit. I don't really have anything on here yet. All the process is running. Close that. And also go check the logs that opens up in a separate view. You can see all of the various log messages. Go take a look at privs, shut this up. You can see various users that you can create as well as user groups. Of course, shared folders, the very basic thing of a NAS. Quotas and domain security. Um, one of the things that's really cool here is you can set up LDAP authentication in this, uh, the, um, QTS 4.0 will run an LDAP server, so if you want to have your computers authenticating through LDAP, you can do that very easily with any QNAP NAS. Network services. Of course, we get to check out Samba. 
and AFP and NFS. I believe all of these should be enabled for my benchmarks. Yep. FTP will always be there. Um, most people turn it off. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off now because I have no need for FTP to be on. Telnet and SSH, and I, I prefer to have SSH enabled because I do a lot of my remote administration and copying up with uh, SFTP. SNMP, if you want to monitor it, um, I personally prefer not to use SNMP on my own network because I really don't have enough devices to merit it. UPnP and Bonjour, these are really cool. Uh, you can see whenever a, uh, let's see if I can get it to show up here. You can see over here, nastier is what I'd called it. And recycle bin, as well as the QSync control panel. And um, I guess I could go go through QSync now. I can't have cloud and users if you want to be able to um, adjust users specifically. It's not a whole lot of stuff set up here at the moment. But simply because I've not set it up. We get into applications. And of course, no NAS would be complete without having lots and lots of applications. <clears throat> this is where they turn various stations on the built in built in web applications to modify. Photo station, music station, multimedia station, file station, download station. and the surveillance station. HD station allows you to um, control various, well, it is, it's kind of says it right there, control various TV applications, such as XBMC and Chrome on the NAS, attached by TV. Um, you know, we can plug in an HDMI cable into the unit and see what's going on. Backup station. They've expanded this out. This used to be its own little backup menu in the old version of the software. And now you can configure rsync, rtrr, time machine, as well as various remote backups. I would really like to see um, not just S3 support. S3 support was added years ago. Um, I'd like to see Amazon Glacier support because I could, I would never really back up my stuff to S3 because it's a little bit pricey for how much stuff that I back up. But for Glacier, it's a little more affordable when you get up into the terabytes range. Be able to control the iTunes server. And DLNA, which is the Twonky media player, media server, really. Media library will automatically look through things and, and find your music photos, whatnot, put them up in a uh, appropriately secured place. Web server, if you want to enable PHP and whatnot. Um, or set up virtual hosts. You know, this this box, this computer, or this NAS is out of the box, ready to be a web server as well. As I talked about earlier, LDAP. If you want to be able to um, control it easily, it'll turn the the users and groups system within the within the NAS to be a uh, full fledged LDAP server. <clears throat> Through here, you can enable OpenVPN and, and PopTop. I know that I'm planning to set up uh, OpenVPN using my own TS-809 whenever I get it upgraded to 401. 
add clients and see the connections. MySQL, MySQL, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it. Um, you know, more, more ability to be able to set this up as a full-fledged web server, as well as a syslog server in case you want to have the NAS collect syslogs from all of your uh, syslog running hosts, so, you know, primarily Linux hosts. Antivirus through, a th I believe they use, yep, they use Clam AV, and you can have it scan regularly to be able to find stuff. Now, this is particularly particularly useful, not so much in a home setting, but in an office office setting, or if you have multiple home users who are using the system. Radius, uh, if you want to have your wireless networks authenticate back to um, Radius and LDAP. I don't know if these can tie, if a Radius can tie in LDAP, that would be really cool if it could. And TFTP for uh, Trivial FTP protocol. Now we'll pop over to some of the other things. Uh, PhotoStation, show you around very quickly. These are some of the, just the ones that they include out of the box. See, so it has a very iTunes-ish feel or, I'm sorry, iPhoto feel. As well as the ability to use QSync, slideshows, and all kinds of photos, videos, whatnot. What's that? Music station. I don't know if they've included any, any audio out of the box. Okay, a little bit. So, um, I believe it's a flash based player. It's not, no, but it might be actually, I think it's HTML5. Pretty cool. See all the various things that are included, as well as a private collection, which is just for your own, just for your own user. Cool. Uh, video station, I think, needs to be installed, so I'm going to skip it for now. But it's basically to create, you know, as it says there, create your own video website. Download station also needs to be installed. Um, although I think I'm going to go ahead and do that because that's one that I will always use. Um, I actually prefer transmission for when I'm doing BitTorrent stuff. Okay, good. Transmission is much better for um, BitTorrent than a download um, download station. Okay, download station is in. Go take a look at it. Has a very uh, uTorrentish feel, and really it's just add a add a line, and if you uh, put in something with the torrent, then it'll just automatically start it. Take a look at some of these settings in here. Just in case I accidentally add something. It's kind of cool. You can add an RSS feed to automatically download things too. Um, I'm not quite sure where my. Um, Okay, there's the dashboard. See some very quick, quick information about the unit. Flip between these. Not sure where my. Uh,
transmission went. <clears throat> File station, you can see the, it requires Java to be able to do anything, so I'm not going to be able to really upload anything, but it's very, it's very simple. You know, upload and it uploads. Um, the Java is partially needed in order to kind of integrate with your own computer locally. You can see all the sample stuff there. There shouldn't really be anything else here. Backup station, which we already saw. Um, I can have cloud. We'll take a look at it. I don't want to set it up just yet. allow you to upload and these are ways to get into it. Now, the auto router configuration will um, use uh, universal plug and play UPMP to punch a hole in your router um, so that you can connect to it directly. The VPN part will allow you to connect through um, a VPN service so that you know, you're only opening a VPN port, you're not opening the, the file ports directly. Um, this is a little bit easier to use for uh, the Mighty NES Cloud Portal. is a little bit easier for people to hit um, who are less technical. And then Cloud Link is um, kind of this um, go to go to a website and it just works. It's like you're you're browsing from home. QSync, which I think we already we already saw that one. Antivirus, which we already saw. So there's some of the things that you can see already installed. Now, iPackage is already installed. There's a variety of other apps in here. Um, surveillance Station, if you want to have video plugged in. DJ, if you want to do um, audio streaming. And there's there's just so much other software that you can install. Um, the Q Package system has really grown over the years um, with both both the Q, both QNAP itself and the QNAP community contributing these. You know, it almost feels like sometimes you can throw a QNAP and make it internet facing and have your own little web server, perfect for whatever you want to use, whatever, perfect for whatever you want to do. Google Drive Sync, Dropbox Sync, great things to have. through here a little bit. Asterisk if you want to set up your own um, telephone system. You know, VoIP is the SIP protocol. Pretty cool. Um, I think I've pretty much shown you everything here. See background tasks. And this is where uh, the notifications will show up. You know, I had some, I had a uh, error whenever I first, or really, I think it was a warning whenever I first logged in. Search the device if you're trying to find something. Um, download. Boom. All in all, pretty cool. Get some details if you're not sure what you're looking for. Or turn on tab mode. And then this everything is always full screen. Which I think I kinda like the window mode. Be able to run more than one thing at a time. <clears throat> so basically QTS uh, 401 is a whole lot better and really 40 in, in general. Is a whole lot better for people who to spend a lot of time messing around inside their NAS, and really, it's kind of an incentive to do more of that. And I I really like what QNAP has done here. It, it looks really slick, and I I'm looking forward to playing around with it some more for my review. This was Colin Dean with Think Computers. Mm -hmm.